DFG Science TV, Bonded Concrete, Breaking Tests, How Strong is Ultra Strong? The researchers from Aachen have already shown how ultra-high performance concrete is made and what sets it apart from normal concrete. Fabricating a pre-stressed concrete beam is a process that demands precise planning, especially with such a filigree cross-section of UHPC subjected to very high pre-stressing forces. The engineer Guido Bertram has prepared the individual steps of the process very thoroughly. The strands are fixed here behind the perforated plate by these anchor bushings and the hydraulic system pushes here against this transverse yoke, thus pushing it backwards in the pre-stressing device and applying the same amount of pre-stressing to all of the strands. Once this has been completed, there is a bit more than 110 tons of pre-stressing force on the strands. The transverse yoke is then fixed in this position so that the stress on the strands is maintained, and then we can install the firmwork at first the bottom and then the sides step by step, which is then fixed in place, and then the formwork can be filled with concrete. Now they can get down to business. Before the 4 meter 70 long beam is cast, the researchers cut the pre-stressing steel, also known as strands, to the right length. It needs to be about 8 meters long so that both ends can be anchored on the pre-stressing devices. To ensure that the strands are in the right position in the beam, they are positioned exactly using a perforated plate on the transverse yoke. The strands are fed through the perforations and then anchored using wedge anchors. Initially the wedges are only tightened hand tight. As soon as the strands are under tension, it's impossible to adjust their position anymore, so it's essential for the researchers to prepare everything very precisely. The force exerted by the hydraulic cylinders is increased until the desired pre-stressing force has been reached. The forces in the strands may vary. If that happens, the researchers need to adjust the anchors until all of the strands have the same degree of pre-stressing. Then they affix the transverse yoke. Now the researchers can start assembling the formwork that they prepared earlier. The formwork is made up of the floor panels and two side casings made of wood. The scientists affix the formwork carefully using G-clamps, since the wet concrete exerts pressure against the formwork. These forces need to be borne by the formwork without any significant deformation. Everything has been meticulously prepared. Before pouring the concrete, the engineer Guido Bertram draws an initial conclusion. The scientists start pouring the concrete. It flows into the corners and around the strands almost of its own accord. To make sure any air inclusions in the concrete are prevented and to keep it in motion, they poke it gently. After a day has passed, they remove the formwork. The team of researchers look at the outcome with great excitement. Now they'll see whether any air was trapped in the UHPC when the concrete was poured and if the concrete actually flowed into every nook of the formwork. Perfect! So far everything's gone exactly to plan. Finally, they coat the surface with a special protective agent to prevent the concrete from drying out and cracking. Then they paint the finished beam white. This will make it much easier to see any cracks while they are conducting the experiments. The formworks of the specimens for determining the material properties of the UHPC have already been stripped, as well as the beam which looks just about finished. However, the pre-stressing forces have yet to be transferred. They're still all in the pre-stressing bed, in other words, in the pre-stressing devices at either end of the beam. The pre-stressing force needs to be released so that the pre-stressing is transferred to the concrete. The cast concrete beam is finally ready. See if the process of transferring the pre-stressing is a success in the next episode. Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.